Hey everybody, pardon my helmet hair, but we just got done riding the 2018 Honda GL1800 Goldwing. Now, you all know this bike, it's the pride and joy of Honda's motorcycle lineup. It's been quite a while since Honda gave it some, uh, some attention. Finally, we have an all new motorcycle from nose to tail. And wow, words don't really do it justice to talk about how good this thing rides. As soon as we pulled out of the parking lot this morning, you could tell that new double wishbone front suspension really is a game changer. It really makes for a motorcycle that just has, you know, magic carpet-like ride quality. When you're riding this thing, you're literally on a cloud, just floating down the road, floating down the road. That front suspension filters out all the bumps, all the chuck holes, all the everything and it really allows you to really focus on the ride and the scenery and doing what you're doing. You know, out here in Austin, Texas, there's not a whole lot of curvy roads, but there were some. And, you know, I presumed in the beginning having a bike that rode so well in a straight line, there's no way that it could handle good in the corners. No possible way. Well, this bike does. It turns just magnificently for a big, heavy bike. You wouldn't think it's as heavy as it is leaning in the corners. It just steers so nicely into turns. It holds a line really well. All right, we've talked about the handling of the 2018 Goldwings. Let's talk about the real star of the show, the flat six engine. Honda's been making these flat six engines for a long time, and this new 24 valve unit is just, it is just an absolute gem. Uh, not only is it smooth, not only does it have a ton of sporting character, but it's really fun to ride. It, it, it makes all the right sounds. When you're riding this thing and, and you give it some throttle, like it really puts you back in your seat and it really fills the cabin with a really pleasing uh, flat six orchestra. You know, Porsche is renowned for their horizontally opposed six and the, the sounds that that engine makes. Well, this Honda Goldwing will give that engine a run for the money in the sound department. It sounds that good. I really like the adjustable throttle modes, the ability to, to tune the, the, the power band to your liking, whether it's economy mode, tour mode, rain mode, if you're riding somewhere sketchy. Sport mode was my favorite mode. It made me r feel like I was actually riding a sporty-ish kind of motorcycle, and I really like that. A lot of people are going to gripe about the Honda losing a little bit of fuel capacity, but during the course of our ride, pretty mellow pace. We averaged about 40 miles to a gallon. Significant bump over the over its predecessor. So yeah, it lose, did lose a little bit of fuel capacity, but it gained a little bit of fuel efficiency. And it's just a lot more powerful and a lot more smooth. So really it's a win-win-win on part of the Honda engineering team and the engine department. Kudos to them. We rode the six-speed manual transmission equipped bike and uh, I love it. I love how tall six gear is. When you're riding at 65 miles per hour, the thing is just barely over 2,000 RPM. Conversely, in first gear, it's a little bit taller than the previous bike, which means it's a little bit easier to kind of get out of the hole. Yeah, you know, the, the lower gearing might be good if you're living in a San Francisco or something where you're climbing hills right away, but this little bit taller first gear worked really good today on the ride. Uh, we didn't get a chance to ride the DC equipped version, but you know, based on my experience with the generation one, generation two systems, systems I'm sure the third generation system is going to be marvelous. But today, the six-speed manual got the job done. It was very fun. Uh, creature comforts and electronics. I was really happy with the way everything came together on the motorcycle, from from the how easy it is to Bluetooth your phone, your headset to the bike to the way the adjustable windscreen worked, the heated seats, heated grips, the stereo. Everything works really well. There was no weird software glitches. Everything was re really seamless. From the moment I paired my, my phone and my Senna 30K headset, I was just blown away. The pairing process probably took, you know, start to finish eight seconds each. I mean, how many times can you buy a brand new anything and simply turn the power button on and pairs right away? It's really amazing that Honda was able to get it right the first time. Kudos to them. Obviously, this bike is a little bit more sporty than before, but still Honda hasn't lost any of its touring credentials. 
This bike's still insanely comfortable. The wind management's excellent. The seating position's great. I love how much more slim it is, how much more uh, compact it is from front to back. It really makes it much more sporty and, and more fun to ride, but you still have those creature comforts. You still have that stability when you're going down the freeway. We were riding today on the Bluetooth headsets and I was talking to my, my coworker Shanda behind me. I'm like, how fast do you think we're going right now? She's like, 50? We are going close to 80. Like that's how smooth of a motorcycle this thing is. A lot of people are gonna gripe about the cargo capacity on this bike and how it got a little bit smaller out back. But you know, given the more sporting aptitude of this bike and the way that it's, it's designed more for, for play and fun, uh, I'll take it. Uh, it's just that much more fun to ride and if we have to sacrifice a small you know 10-15% reduction in cargo capacity it's fine and at the end of the day if you're looking for just a that bike you can own and literally buy brand new and have it in your garage for 10 years and rack up the mileage on and ride it to Texas, ride it to New York, ride it everywhere, ride it to work, ride it in the weekend, just really log miles and be comfortable, bring your girlfriend with you, bring your wife with you and just have a good time and feel good. This 2018 Goldwing's it. They've done a really marvelous job and this, uh, this, this new version is every bit of a Goldwing as it's ever been. And I think folks are really gonna like this motorcycle, whether you were into the brand before or if you're just kind of looking for a luxury bike. This thing's really gonna knock your socks off. So I just got done with my ride on the Honda Goldwing and overall it was a really comfortable experience. I've been on the back of a lot of bikes before and I feel like I'm often fighting to kind of not slide around you know, when we're coming to the stops. And this one, I felt really comfortable being able to, to center my feet onto the pegs and everything and, and not move around too much. And it really did feel like I was sitting in a chair. By the end, my knees were a little bit achy, but I think that's pretty standard. We were on this bike all day long. When we first left today, I really noticed the suspension. And for a split second, I was like, man, I feel like I really am in a car. I got to ride the 2017 version and then I hopped back on this one and I could really tell the difference of that suspension. I wasn't moving along at all. It really felt like I was in a car. And I feel like people say that a lot when you get on these types of bikes, when they're really the couch of motorcycles, but it really felt like you were in a car. Of course, I love the heated seats. It kept me pretty warm and toasty in the morning. You could really feel it on my back. And then also, I really noticed the difference with the windscreen. I know when we were learning about this bike, they invented it, so there's just a little bit of airflow, but it kind of kept you from being too much in a bubble. And I really noticed that today. I know in the summer I could feel, you know, the air going up on me, and I think it'd be enough to be cool, but I wasn't like whipped around back there at all. The cargo compartments, they were, they were pretty cool. I like how you can use them. There's a hydraulic switch on them so they open really easily. And I like how I could just kind of use it like a cubby all day versus trying to like get stuff out of a purse and a bag. So even though there's not as much in there as it was before, the convenience of it is still amazing compared to what you would get on a normal bike. So I love that. If I were to say one thing that might be you know, a little bit of suggestion is the, the arm handles here. I noticed on the 2017 they were nicely located and there was enough room for me to get my arms or hands around it. With this one it was a lot more difficult. I had to really lean in the sport position to be able to get my hands under there to hold on. Just standing up straight I couldn't even really wrap my fingers under it with the gloves on. And I think overall this seat is a lot more sport like than the 2017 version. It's a little bit more upright, the seat's a little bit less and you know your positioning is meant I think to go a little bit forward with the touring of the bike. So overall, I love my experience. I love the day on this ride and I would definitely get on it for a few hundred miles more.